So 3D modeling is super great. To be able to literally imagine anything you can think of and then model that into existence is super cool. But wouldn't it be even more cool if you could just reach out and grab that as a physical object that you can hold and touch? That would be super cool. So yes guys, this is going to be a video on 3D printing and it's going to be kind of a beginner guide to get you guys started with the basics of what you need to know to make your first successful 3D print. Just a few of the basics of how to set up your 3D printer and then how to prepare your models for 3D printing. And then we'll finish off the video by actually printing our model here and seeing what kind of results we can get. As you can tell, I'm geeking out a little bit because crazy! So yes, I'm totally excited to get into this video and show you guys the basics of how to start 3D printing your own models. But before we get started, I'd like to give a quick thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For the past few months, I've been trying to think of ways to maximize my productivity more, trying to put together a productive schedule that I can stick to that isn't too hard. So recently, I've actually been watching some really interesting courses on Skillshare for how to be more productive and scheduled throughout my day, avoiding distractions and being just a little bit more disciplined. And they have some really interesting information taught by professionals that I've been finding really useful, so I can definitely recommend checking them out yourself. Skillshare's yearly plan is really affordable at just $8 a month, and lucky for you, the first 500 viewers can get two months free when they use the sign-up link in the description below. So the 3D printer that I'm going to be using in this video is the Mega S from Anycubic. I'd like to thank Anycubic for sending this printer over for this video. It's a nice little printer, it was easy to set up, and I haven't had any problems with it, so we're going to be using that in this video and uh, yeah it's gotten me some great results so i'm excited to show you guys it in action also if you're interested in the hardware i'm using like the 3d printer i will link to that in the description below where you guys can check it out it's a nice affordable 3d printer that goes for around a 300 350 dollar range so a very cheap but very good well-built 3d printer before going over to the 3d printer and working with the calibration a little bit and stuff i'm going to first show you guys how to prepare your models using the open source free software blender and getting your models ready for 3d printing Okay, so here's a 3D model that I modeled in Blender. As you can tell, it's the Llama from Fortnite, of course. Um, but I wanted to start off by showing you guys this model. This isn't actually the finalized model I used. I want to show you guys this as an example of some of the mistakes I made the first time I went about going to make a model for 3D printing. So I'd say one of the most important things about preparing your model that I didn't really prepare for when I made my first model was making sure your model is what they call watertight. So everything has to be attached. Now I had everything attached as a single object here, but that didn't mean that everything was attached inside the mesh. So if I tabbed into edit mode, I had modeled things like the different pieces here as individual parts and then just expected it to 3D print nicely. But when you convert this to your format for 3D printing and then run it through your slicing software, the slicing software prepares it for the 3D printer essentially, it, um, it doesn't handle this very well. Most 3D printers won't handle individual objects like this very well. Floating objects like that will not be th uh, printed very well. And as you can see, this was my first pass and it worked, but there are some parts of the mesh that are kind of loose, not very well attached. And there's also some issues like around the eyes where you can see I just use individual spheres for the eyes and then they didn't really get attached to the mesh and they're just kind of free floating there and very delicate. So this is one of the basic things that you want to avoid. You want to make sure everything is attached. Now I could have went about and just did that within this model. For example, here you can see on the llama, I have a Boolean modifier set up. So if I want to attach the little uh, like bit here on his harness to the mesh, I could just do that by using this Boolean modifier and having this as a separate mesh and then applying the Boolean modifier as you can see here. And then if I tabbed into edit mode, you would see that it is essentially attached using n-gons and stuff. And it's the way that it will work a lot better. But what I preferred to do and what I went about doing is instead of going through and trying to add Boolean modifiers to all these areas, which often end up looking kind of poor in the smoothing and also possibly give some geometry errors when it comes to 3D printing, instead of doing all that, um, you can also obviously merge objects together and stuff in Blender. So instead of doing all that though, I just recreated the llama from scratch a little smaller this time as I wanted a quicker, smaller 3D print so I didn't have to go as detailed. So what I ended up doing for this model to make it perfect for 3D printing is just extrude the different things out. Instead of doing things like the little harness here as a separate part, as I had done in my first model, I just extruded different areas out, adding a little bit of extra detail and doing the same thing for like the eyeballs here. And this gave me a perfectly clean, 
3D print where nothing was not attached well. Everything came across attached very nicely by doing it this way. And the next thing you want to do for preparing your 3D model is add some supports to your mesh. Now a lot of the slicing software will give you the option to automatically have it add supports. So what I mean by supports is if you're trying to 3D print this and you have like this area here between the legs, when the 3D printer, because it prints from the ground up, you're gonna have an issue right here where the 3D printer won't be able to really lay the filament across here as it's going to just drop to the ground and there's nothing supporting it. So that's what I mean by some supports and you could just do this in your slicing software, but in my experience doing the automatic thing adds way more supports than you really end up needing and will kind of mess up your model a little bit when you have to go and cut off those supports later on. So what I did for this model is I just went into edit mode and made a few of my own little supports by just grabbing some pieces of the mesh here and extruding it down towards the ground, keeping it nice and small um, so you can cut it off later, but by adding some extra supports like this to your mesh, you 3D print it and then you just clip these parts off and you're good to go. Same thing with his mouth here. As you can see, if it's printing from the ground up all the way to here, this would be just kind of hanging there and be printing into space. So it wouldn't work, obviously. So what we have to do here is again, just grab a face here and extrude it up and give him a little bit of a support there under his chin. And by doing that, it will 3D print from the ground up. It will start printing this area, printing this area, and it'll all be attached nicely. So for this model, I found that this was really all the supports I needed. You might, if you want to be safe, add say two supports here or something, but at the scale I'm going to be 3D printing, this is all the support you really need for your 3D model. Now one of the last things you need to do once you're finished with your model is you want it to be all triangulated. Um, you want to convert your mesh from basically faces to triangles. Now, usually the slicing software can also do this for you. I've done it both ways and it seemed to work okay, but I have heard that sometimes you get better results if you just go ahead and triangulate your mesh ahead of time. So in Blender here, then what you can just go ahead and do to make it triangular yourself is just tab it edit mode and hit control T and this will go ahead and add triangles all over your mesh to make it ready to be exported for 3D printing. So now the last thing we wanna do is get the scale set right. Now there's some nice measurement tools built right into Blender here and we're gonna be measuring it with millimeters. So you're gonna wanna first set your scene to be using the metric system and the length to be millimeters. So under your scene settings here, go ahead and make sure that you have it set to use the metric system and that the length is measured in millimeters. All right, so with that said and done, what we're gonna do is we can use the built-in measurement tools right within Blender to get the scale set right for our scene. So I want it to be about 100 millimeters high, which comes out to just about two to three inches. So I'm gonna grab my middle measurement tool here. I'm gonna click right at the top of his ear and then drag all the way down to the bottom of the little base that I have him on. And you can see right now, we're just at three millimeters. So it's a really small model, even though it seems like it's fine in Blender, it's way too small for our 3D printing software. And again, you could always do the scaling later in your 3D software, but because you might also be doing this to say, send it off to have it printed on a different source, I'm gonna show you guys how to get the scale set right within Blender. So with this only being 3.2 millimeters, we want it to be about 100 millimeters. So we can do this pretty easy with just a little bit of a math here. So I'm gonna take a hundred millimeters and divide it by 3.2, which is what it is right now. And you can see that we end up with 31. So 31 and a quarter is actually what we get exactly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab our model, I'm gonna hit S, and then I'm gonna hit 31.25 on my keyboard, 3.25, there we go. And now if I zoom out, you can see we have a huge llama, but it is actually the right size for our software. If I make a new measurement now, grabbing it from the top there and pulling it all the way down, you can see we sit right at 100 millimeters there. So now our model is already to be 3D printed at the scale we want. So the last thing to do once you have your model scaled to the size you want is to apply that scale by going Control A and then applying rotation and scale so your model keeps those scaling perimeters. So with all that said and done, all we have to do is export our model. So we're gonna go File, down to Export, and we're gonna choose the STL format. So go ahead and choose STL. Um, you can leave all these settings as done. You might want to make sure you have apply modifiers checked also because if you didn't apply a modifier, 
you'll want to and then go export STL. So with that exported, we are done in our 3D software and we're ready to go over to our 3D slicing software, which prepares it for the 3D printer and converts it to the right format. For this, we're gonna be using Cura as it's one of the most popular 3D printing softwares out there and supports a large amount of 3D printers. So it will likely work well for you. So here I am in Cura. I will give a link in the description where you guys can download it. And they have, like I said, all kinds of great presets for almost any 3D printer available. So to start, I'm just gonna go over here and click Manage 3D Printers, and you're gonna go ahead and find what 3D printer you have here. So if you wanna add a new 3D printer, you click Add, and then you have all these different options for your 3D printer, depending on which one you are using. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm using the Anycubic Mega S, and it happens to be the same layout as the Anycubic i3 Mega here. So that's gonna be the one I use right there. I'm just gonna add that printer here. As you can see, I already have it added there and I'm gonna click close. So once you have that, you basically have the presets for the size of your 3D printer, the platform that your 3D printer supports basically. So it has it all worked out in the 3D software here for you. And we can go ahead and open up our 3D model. So I'm just gonna click the folder there. And then I'm just gonna open up the llama that we exported to that STL format here. So click open. And you can see right off the bat, we have our little 3D model. And this is exactly the scale that it's gonna be in proportion to the platform on your 3D printer. So in Kira, I'm just kind of rotating around my model here using the right mouse button. And I already have the scale set to what I want, as you can see down here. So because we did all the prep work essentially in Blender, there's not too much that needs to be done in Kira here. If you select your model, you can go ahead and do some of the rotating options and stuff if you wanted to, if your model wasn't already set up, but we went ahead and did all that setup already. So I'm not gonna need to do any of that. Same thing goes for the scaling. Because I already scaled the model up in Blender, I don't need to touch the scale as it's already, if I just control Z that, you can see set to 100 millimeters down in the corner here. So everything is actually pretty close to being ready for 3D printing. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to our settings here and you can see right here would be where you would generate the support. Because I already have it um, set up, I don't want it to generate the support. So I'm gonna turn that off. And then the build plate, I like to leave that just as a skirt. This will essentially just give you a little perimeter of a 3D print around the base and then start your 3D printer. But besides that, these are all more advanced settings that you really don't have to touch. If you've got the default profile for your 3D printer, um, the layer height is set to 0.2 millimeters. Um, there are some settings that can be set here to get a little faster 3D print speeds, but it sacrifices a little bit of quality. So it's kind of up to you. I'm gonna leave these though as the recommended settings, just turning off the build support because I went ahead and did that in Blender. So with that said and done, if I click slice now, you can see it takes a second here and then we are left with our model. So with the 3D printer I am using, there's two different ways now to send your 3D model to your 3D printer to start printing. Instead of using the USB cable supplied, I'm just gonna use the ST card that they give you as I feel like this is a much easier way to transfer files back and forth between the printer and the computer. It's nice and convenient and it doesn't require installing drivers. So I have the SD card in the computer right now, and you can see all I have to do is click save to removable drive, and it will save it right to that USB drive in the right file format to be printed. But as you can see at 100 millimeters, this would take an estimated four hours and 18 minutes. So that's a little bit longer than I wanna print. I could reduce some of the quality settings, but I want to keep the quality relatively high for this 3D print. Instead, I think I'm gonna change the scale a little bit. And like I said, you can do that right inside Cura here. So instead of being a hundred millimeters tall here, I decided that maybe I wanna go down to just about 75 and speed up my print time. So to do that, I'm just gonna type in, well, we'll go down to 70 actually. And you can see that it automatically scales it down there. We have to re-slice. But once we slice and it goes through, you can see now we're down to just an hour and 55 minutes. Way more reasonable if you ask me. And that seems like a better scale for this 3D print. So I'm gonna go down to a 70 millimeters along the height here, and I should be ready to 3D print. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save to my removable drive. It just saves the format right to my USB drive. And if I pull up my USB drive here real quick, you can see that we have our llama good right there in the right format, ready to be 3D printed. So it's time to move to the 3D printer. So with our SD card loaded with our 3D model, it's time to plug it into our 3D printer and get printing. Let's go. So with our 3D printer here, one of the first things we wanna do after the basic assembly, of course, I'm not gonna go over that like I mentioned at the beginning, 
Um, this is the AnyCubic Mega S, and I'm not going to show how I assembled it, as it's just a few parts that need to be bolted together. But usually with your 3D printer, you're going to first have to do a calibration phase after you first set it up. And that's going to involve adjusting your base to be level, to be an even distance from your dispenser here. For this one, you have four different thumb screws that can be adjusted at the different corners to adjust the heights of this base so it's always evenly being dispensed no matter where it's printing on the platform. So if you don't have the calibration set up right, your model might not be sticking to the base right, or it might be sticking too well and kind of smearing. So it's important to get that right distance. With this one, you just use a piece of paper, and as long as there's a little bit of tension between the paper and the dispenser, once it's set up in the calibration phase, you know you're good to go. It might take you a few tries and a few experiments before you really get the calibration set up. It took me a little bit of trial and error, but um, it was pretty quick, and once I had it set up, I was getting good results. But again, I'm not gonna show exactly how to calibrate for this printer, as depending on what printer you might be using, it might be a little bit different. So I do recommend, check the manual, go through the manual and uh, do whatever they say to calibrate the 3D printer. So with the SD card inserted with our Lama ready for 3D printing on it, it's just a matter of going into the print setup and choosing the file off your SD card that you wanna print. So once you start the print, the printer will start heating up. The base on this one also heats up to around 60 degrees. You have all the temperatures and info laid out on your little touch screen here, as well as the time it's probably gonna take to finish your first 3D print. As you can see, I have plenty of PLA white filament here. Uh, ready to be used so that's not going to be an issue. Also at this point I might want to mention that there are some websites out there that already have models that are ready to be 3D printed if you're interested in only 3D printing and not preparing your own models for 3D printing. This video is a little bit more about taking your own model, getting it ready for 3D printing, where you could be able to do it then on your own 3D printer or even sending it to a 3D printing service and having it done that way. So, as you can tell it's a little noisy but I have a GoPro set up here to take a time lapse of the 3D print because that's always cool to see it happen really fast. I'm just gonna sit back and enjoy this 3D print. Okay, so here's our little 3D printed llama family. And as you can see, this one is the one that I printed a little bit smaller. This was the original one that I did where there's a few errors on it. But um, yeah, some really cool looking results. This is probably one of the coolest things I've actually done recently. 3D printing, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's really cool to be able to take something that you modeled totally in a digital space and then actually be able to physically hold on to that thing that you just modeled. It's pretty cool. Um, and I definitely recommend you guys, if any of you guys are kind of on the edge of debating of trying uh, 3D printing, then you take that leap and kind of get into 3D printing because it is one of the most rewarding things I think you can do. So that's gonna kind of do it though. I'm not gonna show how to do some of the finishing touches. I was recommended to use XTC 3D to kind of coat your finished 3D models and then it's really easy to paint over that and stuff and it gives them a nice smooth 
glossy finish, but that's something I'm going to be experimenting with. I haven't done much of that myself yet, um, but that would be kind of the next step if you want to take your 3D model and really make it nice and smooth and then paint it or something. Actually though, with this model, the slight texture that you kind of might notice on it isn't that bad for the Fortnite Llama because it's supposed to be kind of furry. But um, anyways, that would be something that you would do in general on uh, finishing your models. But that's going to kind of finish this video. I'd like to again thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And uh, yeah, if you guys learned something from this video, getting started with your own 3D printing tasks, uh, definitely leave a like and maybe subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in a future video. Bye-bye. Flat. Cut. Woo!